Hello folks, this is Yulik and I would like to show you how to install shaders from the Logic Matchbook Shader Collection. Logic Matchbook is a website that we have put up just over a year ago and it hosts various Matchbook shaders for Flame, Smoke, Flame Assistant, Flare that you can use in your creative work. Multiple artists have to contributed shaders since the site have been opened and we are currently clocking more than 100 shaders in our collection. The shaders are small, easy to install and do not have backwards compatibility problems normally associated with Spark plugins. To install the shaders, first let's go to the site logicmatchbook.org. That is logic-matchbook.org. Logic with a K in the old discrete tradition, of course. At the top left corner, you will see a button called Download the entire collection. Click that button and the targ zip file is going to be downloaded to your hard drive. Open this file and once the archive has opened, you will see a file called install.command. Now, if you are on Linux, you will have to run this file uh, as if it were a shell script. That is, you would have to go to a terminal and you have to go to that particular directory and you would have to run it like so. All right. However, since we are on the Mac, we can just double click that file and OS X is going to run the script for us. So let's do that. The script is going to ask you for a password. As a matter of fact, we need the password to install into the flame directories because by default, the flame directories are protected and are only accessible to the administrators on the machine. So let's enter the password. And you're going to see that it installs the shaders into every version of flame, smoke, Flame Assist or Flare that you have installed on your machine. Now let's jump to Flame Assist. Once we are in Flame Assist, we're going to jump into a BFX segment where we have our standard black screen and we're going to press M in our node bin to quickly reveal the Matchbox node. Grab the Matchbox node into your schematic and you will see that there is a new directory available to you in the shader list which is called Logic. Click that directory and you will see a number of shaders in there. However, you might be surprised that you will, that this directory is going to look empty. That happens because you actually have to select a format of the shader that you want to use. Most of the shaders from logicmatchbook.org are served in the GLSL format, which you have to select in the format selector. Once we switch over to GLSL, you can see that lots of shaders are available to us. Switch the display to proxies to actually see the icons for the various shaders. Don't be surprised that you're going to see more icons than are actually presented on the website. This has to do with the fact that some shaders actually use multiple passes or multiple chunks of GLSL code to perform their operations. For example, in this case, we have a Matchbox shader called Colored Frame, which is in fact a multipass shader, which consists of passes starting with pass 01 and ending with the pass 07. Don't click the intermediate icons, just click the first one, and this is going to load the complete shader for your perusal. In this case, we're going to grab the colored frame. Now here it is. If we click on the note that is attached to the shader, you can read where the shader comes from, what kind of input inputs it accepts, and, sh and some short usage instructions on it. Let's press result. And you're going to see that by default, the colored frame gives us a white frame. However, we can also switch it over to noise or to a grid or to a ref map or to an ST map. Now, one thing of note is that when you use a Matchbox shader in your setup, be it a BFX segment or a batch setup, uh, the shader actually gets saved together with the setup as well. So when you update your shader installation on your machine or move the setup to a different machine, the shader actually gets copied together with the setup. As well, when you make a flame archive of your setup of, or of your BFX segment, the shader is going to be written into that archive. Therefore, you can easily update shaders without worrying that your setups are going to change underneath you. Another thing of note is that most of the shaders from Logic Matchbook contain the email addresses of their authors. For example, the colored frame shader contains the emails of Miles and Ivar, who have made the shader together. So if you have any questions about that particular shader, you can usually shoot them an email and ask for, for improvements. 
Another thing uh, that you can make use of is uh, matchbox shaders in the timeline. So to the same token, we can select our black solid color and click on effects. And we can select matchbox and then load the same colored frame shader. And then we can switch between the different types of generators for this particular shader. So I hope this tutorial has been useful to you. We hope that you are going to find the shader collection useful in your own work and that you will also at some point contribute your own shaders to the repository. Be advised that some shaders cannot be used for commercial work. Those shaders contain a strike through dollar sign on their icon. The strike through dollar sign means that this shader has been originally created by its author as a demo work or that we could not contact the original author of the shader for permission to distribute the shader for commercial usage. You can, however, study the code of the shader and use it for your own clean room implementations or just look at the nice effects that it provides. To get started creating matchbox shaders on your own, go to fishbowl.tv which contains a series of beginner tutorials on how to write your own matchbox shader. The Logic Matchbook team wishes you a very good luck and a very productive and creative 2015.